Good morning. Welcome back to GP Outdoors. That pretty little white flower is our provincial flower. It's called a trillium. They grow wild all throughout the forest. It's beautiful. So I have an interesting question for you today. Let's say you're a new tractor owner like I am. You're outdoors, you're working in the forest all day. At some point you get off the tractor and you go to walk by it and all of a sudden you see what looks like a glint of fluid on your hoses, your hydraulic hoses. You stop for a minute and you look. Maybe there's an accumulation of hydraulic fluid by your flared coupling. Maybe it's along your hose somewhere. Or maybe it's down on one of your quick couplers. Either way, if you're like me, you're probably going to immediately grab your rag. You're going to take a look at it. You're going to grab it with your hands. And maybe you're going to wipe off the coupling wherever the accumulation is. Maybe you're going to wipe off the hose. And then you're going to lean in and take a look. And then if you're not sure, you can't see it, you're immediately going to turn the tractor on. You're going to fire it up to see if you can encourage the leak again. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to use your hands to see if you can find the leak if it's not noticeably visible. And if that's not enough, if you think you found the leak or you're not sure, you're going to then lean in and try to get a closer look to see if you can see the pinhole leak or the hole in the hose. However, what I've learned this week is that that might not be a good idea depending on the situation you're in. Why don't you grab a coffee if you have a few minutes, and especially if you're a new tractor owner, stick around with me and let's talk a little bit about hydraulic pressure and how to handle your hoses. Cheers. I just found out that this tractor pumps out over 2,000 pounds per square inch of pressure in these hoses and through this hydraulic system. This little compact tractor, I can only imagine how much pressure builds up in the big guys. So if you follow the channel, you probably know a few weeks ago I had posted a video which showed me replacing a hydraulic hose that had had a pinhole leak in it. Actually, it was a little bigger than a pinhole. And after I'd done the video, I was very fortunate in the fact that I had a number of subscribers who provided me a little bit of information on something called hydraulic fluid injection. Didn't know anything about it, and, and like yourself, if you're a new tractor owner, although I've had this for a year and a half, it's a constant learning experience. So I went off onto Google, checked into it, read a lot of articles, called my Kubota dealer and actually got to talk to a mechanic, and here's a few things I found out. Didn't know much about the hydraulic system in this tractor. And don't get me wrong, I don't have a mechanical background, but I know that there's pressure in those lines. I just didn't realize how much and how dangerous it was handling those hoses, especially if there's a rupture or a pinhole leak. So I went to the internet, looked up a lot of articles. I Googled hydraulic fluid injection and skin, hydraulic fluid and skin, and I found dozens of articles and pictures and videos to do with this issue called hydraulic fluid injection. And it's a little bit scary but I wanted to fill you in on some of the commonalities across all of these articles. I found articles from hospitals, doctors, medical journals, uh, departments of health, construction companies, uh, heavy equipment manufacturers, as well as heavy equipment operators associations, and they all kind of have similar themes. So I know there's definitely a lot of credibility to this. Number one, they say that all the patients involved in the case studies that suffered hydraulic fluid injection all say generally the same thing. They say that the pain they felt at the time it occurred was like a pin prick or a wire prick, and in some cases, as much as a bee sting. But that's it. Nothing you wouldn't otherwise feel when you're out in the forest. The problem is in the cases where people did not seek immediate medical attention, the results are a little devastating. And there are pictures on the internet which you can find, and I'll leave you to find them for yourself, but they're very disturbing pictures. Because although there are different types of hydraulic fluid, Generally speaking, hydraulic fluid has chemicals in it that will kill human tissue cells. Not just damage them, kill off those cells. And I think the evidence you'll find on the internet speaks for itself. So when you're handling your hoses, it's very important to make sure that if you do find a rupture or you think you have a rupture, follow some good advice. Advice that you'll find in your owner's manual as well as you'll find out from your dealer. What they say is that if you suspect a leak, especially a pinhole leak, and you're not sure where to find it, never use your hands and never, of course, lean in close with your eyes because it's coming out of that hole or can potentially be coming out at as much as 2,000 PSI just on that little tractor. They say take a piece of cardboard and run it along the hydraulic hoses because even if you can't see the clear fluid, you'll see it show up on the cardboard. Another thing that was a common thread across a lot of these stories is that the cases were very similar. The operator of the tractor or the equipment 
saw hydraulic fluid, suspected a leak, and in order to try to find the leak, he turned the equipment or the tractor on and fired it up to try to get the pressure up to try to encourage the leak to occur again. And that's when they ran their hand across or leaned in, and that's when they suffered the hydraulic fluid injection. So very important when you're dealing with it, if you think you have a leak, make sure that you're using the cardboard, keep a distance, and try to find the leak as safe as possible. And I think most importantly, don't fire up the tractor to full speed and try to ramp up the pressure in those pistons. Another really important thing I learned about this tractor through this exercise is that when you're dealing with your flared couplers or your quick connects or you've got to replace a hose, you're going to get air in the line. What I've learned is that the systems, at least on this tractor, are designed in such a way that if you get air in your hydraulic lines, the system will bleed the air out itself. So unlike doing a brake job or doing some plumbing at the house, there's no requirement for you to try to bleed the air out before you connect the hoses. Basically, you make sure that whatever you're replacing, you firmly and permanently, you know, tighten up those flared couplings as well as your quick connects or anything else you've got to do. You know there's going to be air in it. You turn the tractor on and you turn your steering wheel far to the left and far to the right several times as well as you move your joystick around and cycle your cylinders. And the system itself somehow purges the air out. So all in all, the point of the video was not to scare anyone. The point was just to bring up another piece of information or some more knowledge that I've learned about this compact tractor. And I've certainly recognized that even though it's been a year and a half, I still am a new tractor owner. I consider myself one because still to this day, I'm still learning things about this tractor as I go. And this is kind of an important one. Similar to any tools you have in your workshop, whether it's a power saw or table saw or your router, you have a certain respect for those tools because you recognize the dangers involved in using them and it makes you a safer operator. And hopefully this has helped out again today. So I hope the information was helpful today. When you get out there today, be safe. Thanks for sticking around. If you like the channel, please click subscribe, hit the like button, and if you want to know when I'm posting videos, just click that little bell. Have a wonderful week with your families. I'll see you again on the next one. Cheers.